Hey folks, John here, Old Hickory Forge. Welcome back to the channel. So what we're making today is going to be a, a Viking or Norse inspired sax knife. First of all, it's pronounced sax, not CX. So let's get that out of the way. But uh, the term sax is the uh, the Old Norse or the Anglo-Saxon term for knife. So it's basically as generic as the word knife. It could mean anything. If you look up historical examples of saxes, there's broken back saxes, saxes with drop points, full flat grinds, saber grinds, scandy grinds. There's you can get really really complex with them, but overall they're pretty straightforward knives. They were they had simple fittings, simple handles, so nothing crazy. But what I've got here, Bora some 1084. That's what I'm going to be using. I don't really have much of a plan with this build. I've, sometimes I just have better luck just going, just starting on something and figuring it out as I go. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's get started. So first things first, this is already cut off at an angle from what I was using it for last, so I'm just going to work that point in. Keep it dressed up. What kind of a long point, so I'm just going to carry this taper back further. Keep dressing it up. Alright, I've got the point forged out where I want, and now I'm going to go ahead and mark out the material that's going to become the tang. I want about a, uh, about a 9 or 10 inch blade on the finished project product. So I'm just measuring from the end of my anvil to my printer holes about nine inches. I'm gonna do a set down. See, I've got that material isolated with that little mark right there. I'll do another on this side and start bringing this material back to forge in the tank. Let's make another set down over here. Now it's just a matter of cutting off the excess. Forging out a tank. Alright, I've got the tank forged out where I like it. Now it's time to lay in the edge bevel, so I got my dog's head hammer. I'm gonna go for a saber grind on this, so I'm gonna start about two thirds of the way up the blade and just work my way towards the edge. So, as you hammer in bevels, the knife is naturally going to curve, and if you're going for a straight knife like I am, it's a good idea to have a wooden mallet handy. This will straighten the blade without damaging the edge profile too much. So, here we are after normalizing. Next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and strike in the bevels. Being careful not to touch the spine up here because I want to leave the hammered texture. Bring the profile to its final shape and start thinning out the tang. The tang needs to be the thickest and the widest up here where it, uh, where it meets the blade, so... There's a good bit of material down here I need to move, but that's not that big a deal. Uh, after that, we'll get these shoulders filed square so we can fit a guard and we'll keep moving. A technique I like to use when grinding in a tank because they tend to get hot pretty quickly is to use a push stick. So what I'll do is I'll just apply more pressure towards the bottom of the tank to get that nice taper. And I can grind a lot more aggressively for a longer time than I could if I was holding this with my hand. So here we are after the rough grind, got the tang uh, ground down to where it needs to be, got the bevels roughed in. I must say, grinding these bevels was actually really, really easy because this is a straight blade. I'm used to curved blades. Getting a nice even grind all the way across is really, really easy. I've never made just a plain old sax before, so this is, uh, you know, this is a pretty pleasant experience. But anyway, now we're just going to take our trusty file. We're going to file these tang shoulders to square and you know flush so they'll accept a guard and everything and then we'll uh, get the guard fitted up if you've seen my knife with no power tools video you know how much i love hand files not but that's what we got going on so let's go to make the fittings i've got a couple of pieces of wrought iron with some holes drilled in them and filed out to make a slot we're going to hot fit them to the uh, the tang of the knife to get as close as we can. We'll probably still have to do some file work, but the more we can save ourselves, the better. To get our guard fitted, we'll just slip it onto the end of our tang. Make sure our vice is good and tight. And I got a piece of square tubing here. We're just going to force the guard all the way up to the shoulder, and that'll get us a nice, perfect fit. Well, close to perfect. We'll probably still have to do some filing. 
while we're here, we'll go ahead and get the tang, burn the newer block of walnut. Here's where we are. I've got the bolsters fitted up and the uh, handle block on there. Right now, it's attached with super glue because what I'm going to do, I want a black oxide finish on the fittings. And if I uh, if I ground it after the heat treat while the handle was already peened on there, I wouldn't be able to get that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind the handle and the bolsters to shape, and then I'll knock all this off of here, and then throw the fittings back in the fire to blacken them before the final assembly. It's just an idea I had that I think will work. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rough shaping of the handle now. Here we are after grinding the handle I've already disassembled. All I did was put it up in the vise and tap the bottom of the tang with a hammer. The super glue worked like a charm, but everything is uh, sanded to its final shape pretty much. I'm just going to throw uh, the fittings back in the fire, blacken them real good, hand sand the handle to its final grit, and then move on with heat treating and finish grinding the blade. Alright, now it's time for a good old differential temper. If you're new to knife making and you don't know what tempering is, when a knife comes out of the quench, it's very, very hard, very brittle. Like I could grab this and snap the end of it if I wanted to right now. So you need to temper it back just a little bit to make it a little more ductile, but still enough to hold an edge. So what I like to do is clamp the edge up in a vise. The vise will act as a heat sink to keep the heat from creeping down into the edge too much because you want the edge to be good and hard. And then I'll temper the spine back to about blue so it's nice and springy. And then I'll temper the edge to a light straw color or so. So the knife is good and strong, but it'll still hold an edge pretty well. There you go. We got blue on the spine, brown in the middle, straw on the edge. That's what I was going for. All that's left to do now is finish grind this thing and uh, get it assembled. So all the pieces are glued up. I stuck uh, two pieces of scrap steel and one into the bark lamp because the tang of the knife is still sticking out, so I couldn't just set it against the bark lamp, but that's clamped up. We'll let that sit till it sets, and then uh, we'll keep moving. So what's going on now to uh, permanently affix all this together? I've got it clamped up in the vise with a piece of leather to keep from marring up the blade, and we're going to peen over this little bit of the exposed tang. If this was on a sword or something with a much bigger pommel, I would heat this up and peen it because uh, I wouldn't be worried about scorching the epoxy, but because this bolster is so thin, I am a little bit worried about it scorching the epoxy inside the handle, so I'm gonna be peeling it cold. So, nothing to it really. See what I mean? Now it's all permanently affixed. So, here's a good look out in the light. I went for kind of a satin finish on the blade just because I thought it would look good with the, you know, rough forged spine. I think it does. Sharpened up really well. The straight edge is really easy to sharpen on this thing. I really enjoyed making this knife. It's a very straightforward project. Wrought iron fittings, walnut handle, my maker's mark, peened pommel. There you go. There you go. One Viking sax. Board start to finish. I was just joking earlier when I said it has to be pronounced sax. I think uh, I think the old Norse pronunciation is sax, and the Anglo-Saxon or Old English pronunciation is actually sax. So either way you say it's fine. But anyway, nice looking knife. Blade came out at about eight and a half inches, which I'm pretty happy with. Handle feels really good. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is make a sheath for this thing, and then it'll be up for sale on the Etsy. So if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase it or anything else on there, that'd be great. And, uh, but anyway, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always gonna be more cool stuff coming. Thanks for watching.